Throughout my formative years, I was never exposed to the significance and the person of Jesus. Uh, and I ended up finding my self-worth uh, and identity through my own sheer will, be it excelling in academic achievements or being a dutiful son. And religion was never in the picture except uh, the occasional visits to the temple with my mom. Before I stepped in the Christianity world, I was very self-centered. I made decisions for myself as long as I'm happy. I never cared about others' feelings. As a child, I would pray to God only to ask Him to grant me my request, such as for good exam results and good friends at school, because these were the things that defined my identity. I hardly read the Bible outside of Sunday school. My relationship with God was, for, was very works-based. I thought that if I could do certain things to please God, I would be at a better standing with Him. Uh, I was born into a Christian family where both my parents are first-generation Christians. Growing up, I would proudly proclaim that I was a Christian, and I saw it as a key part of my identity, even though looking back now, I was truly unaware of what being a Christian really entailed. Um, truth be told, my identity was not built on Christ, and instead I based my self-worth on my academic and career achievements. However, in doing so, my relationship with God then took a back seat and I became really fixated on worldly successes. So I was privileged to be born into a Christian family and I recount many fond memories of attending Sunday school, watching Christian children's shows and schooling and mission school for 12 years. But despite being placed in a Christian home and environment, God was distanced from me. However, God has never forgotten me. This little kid who opened his door and his heart from very young age to receive him. He clearly showed himself at the hardest period of my life in 2017 when I was deciding to move to Singapore. And his words were so loud and clear that I felt that this is the only option for me and I must follow him now more than ever. This came crashing down when I endured the hardest season in my life. Despite countless prayers to change my circumstances, nothing worked and I was left crushed. At that point, a long-time friend of mine learned about my struggles and invited me to study the book of John together. Slowly but surely, God revealed to me through his word that I had been living in darkness and loving my own sinful lifestyle. And I remember the feeling I had. God spoke to me. Romans 5, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. These are the exact words I heard. And that is the exact moment I know God is with me. I thought I was doing life right, but in reality, I was enslaved to sin and my endless striving for more took a toll on my health, my conscience. My heart was eventually stirred to think that something wasn't right, and that I wasn't truly living a Christian life, and that I was not abiding in Christ. I knew that I had to seek God, and that I needed rescue. But God kept showing me His mercy. He used His people, His words, His community to influence me for about 15 to 20 years. I ignored Him and He never forsaken me. Through my work experiences, He made me see the brokenness of this world and ultimately made me confront my own brokenness and my own inability to mend any of this myself. All of this culminated into a humbling realization uh, that I desperately needed a Savior, but as blatantly and shakily rejected Jesus, despite having the gain knowledge. This also made me aware of my sinfulness that I, with my constant worries about the things of this world, failed to do justice to the fact that Jesus paid for my sins on the cross. This life that He has given me should not have been used solely for the things of this world, as it disregards the fact that I have a Saviour who died for my sins. It's hard to pinpoint a specific time that I was truly born again, but I know it was not because of anything that I had did. It was God who reached out to me at my lowest point. 
I now understand that life isn't about my own happiness, but about God's glory. So slowly I began surrendering my sinful desires, goals, and plans to Jesus. I'm still a work in progress, but I now know that all my plans and desires count for naught if they are not in line with God's plan for me. By God's mercy, I'm able to be baptized and through this, I pray that I learn of God's will for me. And by His grace, I have been saved and forgiven. I have put my faith in Jesus and I can't thank Him enough of what He has done for us. I began internalizing the love of Jesus, relishing in His goodness and His saving grace for sinners, and recognize the Lordship that He has over my life that I joyfully submit to. God is my Heavenly Father and I am His beloved child. He will never forsake me. He loves me more than any earthly parent or human being can love. 1 John 5, 11 and 12, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. 1 John 5, 11 and 12. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Lord and Savior, who died for your sins and was raised for your justification? I do. Do you renounce Satan and the evil powers of this world that rebel against God? And do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you away from God's love? I renounce them. Do you promise to follow and obey King Jesus as your Lord in the company of his people, the church? I do. I do. Now upon the profession of faith in me, I hereby baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.